In today's tutorial, we're learning how to make this animated infographic in PowerPoint to really take your slides to the next level. We're also making a four part variant. So if you need four topics, you can use this one or a five part variant. And then to top it all off, this is my favorite one. We'll make the six part variant as well. If you want to follow along in this tutorial, this is the color palette that I've used. So you can pause the video and add them to your slides right now. And for those who want to save some time while making presentations, I have fully made templates available that you can download via the link in the description below. And those will save you a lot of time and effort in your next project. And we're starting from a blank slide. Now, first thing I like to do is change the layout to a blank slide. That way our slide master is always correct. Next, we go to the design tab and we go to variants because we want to change the color palette. Go to colors and here you can choose whichever color palette that you like. I'm choosing the future purple one of which we have the color codes. Now we right click format background and go to gradient fill. I'm choosing the darkest gradient fill that we have here. And if you want to make it a little bit lighter, you can always take the center color and change it to something a bit lighter. And then you can play around with these settings until you have the desired result. I'm going for a slightly lighter tint in the middle. Now let's add the infographic and I'm starting with the three part version. So for that, I go to insert smart art relationship and here i want to choose the venn diagram standard it is on three you have to add in some numbers so one two and three and we're going to right click ungroup the selection delete the numbers and it will still act as one shape so what i'm going to do is right click again and ungroup once more so that we have the circles separately but all placed nicely on top of each other we're going to drag around the selection Go to shape format, merge shapes, and here we want to choose fragment. And this will create a fragment of all the overlapping parts. This means all of these parts, they are now individual shapes. I'm going to remove the inner one. And here you can see that we have the parts of a sort of half moon that we can create. We can select the inner part, and then we're going to select Alt Shift and click on the outer part, the larger part. Go to merge shapes and union. So this acts as one shape now. Ctrl Z to place it back. Select the inner part, hold shift and select the outer part. Merge shapes, union for the other one. And do the same for the third one. Here we can see this shape is acting a bit weird. And if you see this, that's because the alignment isn't perfectly the same. So what we can do to solve this is go to shapes, add a circle. And we're just going to add a circle here so it meets the edge of the shape here and that it covers the entire outline. Select the circle, hold shift and select the original one and merge shapes again. In this way, it will perfectly match with the others. Now we're going to select all three shapes, go to line and give them no outline. I want to give them a solid fill and choose this nice purple. I'm selecting one of these shapes. Going to the second tab in the shape options for effects, shadow, and then choose a preset with an inner shadow. I'll increase the blur to let's say 30 points. And you can always change the color if you want to make it lighter or darker. I'm going to choose one of the really dark purples here. Hold Ctrl Shift C to create and copy the formatting and Ctrl Shift V to paste it on the others. And now you can easily go to the Format tab again and change the color to something darker. So let's choose a darkest one. So a light, a bit darker and a darkest one. And this uses a nice three part infographic. Now let's add some of the details. So I'm going to add a text box and drag it on top. Let's call it zero one. I always like to use that zero if we only have one number. So we have a nicer balance, increase it in size and let's give it a font near next center it in the middle and i'm going to use a sub font bolt for this case we're using font size 32 and i'm placing it in the middle of that shape i'm holding control and dragging the text box to create a copy and calling this one number two and doing the same for the third one and calling this one number three i'm going to place them on the same height Let's find a nice spot, somewhere centered in the middle and around at the same location. I'm going to 
select everything and drag in to the side. Now, if you want to scale this down, you can always right click group or control G and then hold the shift key and scale it down if you want. I think the size was quite good, so I'm going to ungroup it again. Now I'm going to select the shape, hold shift and select the text and press control G or right click group to group them together. In this way, we have three parts working on this slide. So we have the three individual shapes grouped with the letters. Ctrl C to place it all back. And now let's add some text. Add a text box and drag it here on the left. I'm going to type in 01 and use some dummy text, lorem ipsum. Give it a nice font. Let's use the same. Avenir next. Make it white. A bit larger, 20. And for the sub font, I'm going to use the same bold. Drag a text box underneath, and here I'm going to place the dummy text again. Let's make sure it aligns and make it a bit smaller. Select both, hold control and drag, and let's call this 02, and repeat once more for the third part. And we can select everything and position it nicely on the left and in the middle of the slide. So we have equal sides or equal space on the top and the bottom. And also the left part is nicely aligned with the right part here. So it's a good balanced slide. That's what we want. Now let's look at the animation part. And for that, I'm going to right click duplicate the slide. And on the first version or the first slide, I want to drag out the text boxes. So if you want to zoom out, you can hold control and zoom backwards or scroll backwards or use this toggle switch here at the bottom. Select the text boxes, hold shift and drag them to the left. So we move them on a horizontal axis, hold shift and Click on the first two text boxes to release a selection and drag the other ones a bit more towards the side. This way they will fly in nicely at a different speed. Select the three objects here and rotate them, let's say 45 degrees to the left. I'm using the same rotation for all of them. And now I'm going to drag them out of the slide. You can place them at a different angle. That doesn't matter. Just make sure that they don't overlap with each other. That's the nicest effect. Now we're going to second slide again, transitions and apply morph. And here you can see them flying in nicely already. If you want, you can increase the curvature. Let's say we drag them 90 degrees and maybe position them a bit closer and you'll see the difference. And if we now preview this again, and once we click, we see that the animations or the three parts are rotated in nicely. And we also have that text flying in which is a pretty cool effect on a slide. Now let's have a look at how we can create the versions of the four part, five part and six part. It's the same concept, but the important thing is that we do the positioning correctly. So let's start with the four part first. I'm going to duplicate the slide, remove all the content, go to insert, smart art, relationship, Venn diagram. And here I want to type in one, two, three, press enter and four. Right click, ungroup again. It's important that you do it in the order and only then remove the numbers. Otherwise it won't work. Select them all again. Right click, ungroup. And here we can see the same thing happening. We have the overlapping shapes. Select them all. Shape format. Merge. Fragment to get the individual pieces. Remove the middle one. And now we can see instead of two, we get three overlapping parts. So we start from the middle, hold shift, select the larger one and select the largest one. Go to merge shapes and union to create a nice shape here. Repeat for the others, merge shapes and union and the same for the others. Union and select them all and union. And here we can see we get a bit of funky shapes. And that is not exactly what we want. So we're going to repeat the same thing as with the two shapes. The more shapes you add, I think from five or upwards, it will not happen anymore. So I'm going to add a circle. Let's start with this one. You can always zoom in, position it on the border, and then just drag it on top of that part. Hold shift, select shape and merge. Let's repeat that. So add a circle. Let's do this one here. It's a small one. 
So like both union. And then the shape we can see two overlapping or two cutouts are missing. So I'm going to add two circles. Insert shape circle. This one here. If your shape doesn't match, you can always copy them. So let's copy the circle and then add a smaller one right here. It's just important that the lines are covered. That's all. So we hold control and drag to create some copies. And you can use the arrow keys to fine tune the selection. There we go. And make sure you select all the shapes while holding shift, merge shapes and union. And this way it looks quite good. Here we can see a small piece missing. So I'm going to, for good measure, I'm going to repeat that once more. And merge shapes. This looks good. And now the final shape, we have one more to go. Shapes, circle, and then I repeat that for the bottom part. We can rotate it so that it nicely matches. And then we merge. And this way we have four nice shapes that nicely interline and are also perfectly positioned. So we don't have to create them from scratch. They are nicely aligned. Now an easy trick is that you go to the previous slide. We select the grouped item. We click once more for the selection of the shape. Ctrl Shift C. And now we select all four and Ctrl Shift V to create an instant copy of the formatting. So it really speeds up the process. Select one, right click, format shape. And we're going to give this just one tint darker each time. There we go. And maybe this one we can go for the lighter version. So we have four nice shapes. It's a bit of a color wheel. I kind of like it. So we can select this text box, Ctrl C, and then just paste it on top here. Let's go counterclockwise. I think that readability is better if we go counterclockwise. Since we put the text around it on the sides, it's more logical if we have one here, two, three, and four, than if we have one, two, three, and four. But that's a personal preference. I'm going to select the text boxes, only two for this one, and paste them on the left. Oops, let's select them. And there we go. If the text boxes overlap, you can always make them a bit smaller. And you can spread them out a bit more. I'm going to do it like this, so that you're on the same height. There we go, maybe this one can go a bit higher. And then we can also expand the box a bit. That way it looks like the text is sort of more integrated with the design. And that's what I like. Select them all, hold Control Shift and create a copy. And here we're going to arrange, align, and align to the other side. So align to the right, and then also do the same for the text. So the text aligns to the right. And then we can shift it in a bit until we get that same distance from the left and the right of the slide. Release, and then change the numbers. Oops, I forgot it in the middle. So we have one, this becomes two, then this becomes three, and this becomes four. And we do the same here, call this three and four. If you feel that this middle part is a bit too large, you can always group them together, scale it down, hold control shift to scale it from the center. And then you can choose the right proportion. Don't forget to ungroup again. That's important for the next part. Here we can see I still had them grouped. So right click ungroup as well and then group the number with the shape so that we have four parts to work with, same as the last slide. Now we're going to look at the animation part and for that we right click duplicate the slide and on the first part here we scroll backwards again, we drag out the text boxes, same thing, drag them out a bit further for the bottom ones. It's just the design style that I like that they fly in at different speeds, it gives that extra touch. And then select the elements, rotate them 45 degrees, let's say, or even more. Let's go for 45 degrees. Close this step, and then drag them upwards and to the side. I kind of like to have the shapes flying first so we don't have too much overlap with the text. So I'm going to put them close to the edge. There we go. Now we select the second slide, transitions and apply morph. 
and there we see them flying nicely. I think the rotation also here can be more, so I'm going to select them and put it on, let's say, 90 degrees. Just make sure that they don't, or they're not visible in the slide, the original slide, for a nice effect. And now let's preview the second part. And this is how you can make this four part animated infographic in PowerPoint, which looks really nice and something different than the three part. Now let's move to the five part and six part. And also for this one, we have the same principle. So I'm going to duplicate the slide for the five one, delete content, go to insert, smart chart, relationship, Venn diagram again. And here we go to one, two, three, four. And you can see we have to remove one, five, there we go. Right click, ungroup, hold shift and select the numbers, delete them. And now we can increase the size of the Venn diagram. Just make sure you hold the shift key. If you don't hold the shift key, you'll distort them. That's not nice. So hold the shift key and place them in the middle. This one is actually my favorite. So I'm going to right click, ungroup, select them all, shape format, and then choose fragment. Remove that middle part. And here you'll see, you'll get one more selection. So you select the middle one, one larger, larger again, and then the outer ring, shape format, merge, and union. And also here, there's a few tweaks, but I think it will get better with the other ones. So I'm going to adjust that real quick, add the circle on top, and then also this one here at the bottom. Let's duplicate, select the shapes, select the larger one, and union. And this way it looks quite nice. For the other ones, I'm going to repeat that. So union. And I'm not sure why it happens since we use the standard smart art, but sometimes you have to adjust them. It's not all the time, so maybe for you it's not necessary. And now we do the third one. And we just repeat the process and then union. And then the final one. Let's give this the same color. And there we have our five part wheel. Now we're going to use this same technique. So I'm going to select one of the shapes. Let's go for the lightest one. Control Shift C, select them all at once. And Control Shift V. Oops, this one, there we go. Now we're going to right click format shape and then go one tint darker each time. I think this one will be quite good since we have five different tones in our palette. So it will look quite nice. This is a bit too dark, the same as the background. So I'm going to look for a variation in the shape or in the color and see whichever one looks nicest. I'm using one of the spare colors. So this one I think looks great. Now I'm going to copy the numbers again. So select the number one and paste it on the slide. I'm going to start here with number one. So we have one, two, three, four, five. That way we get a nice positioning of the text around it as well. For five, it's the, let's say it's the hardest one since we don't have an equal or an even number that we have two on the left, two on the right. We will have them more in an, in an unbalanced way in this case, but we can easily solve that. So I'm going to change the numbers, two, three, four, and then five on top. Let's grab some text elements and put them on the slide. Let's put number one here. Hold control shift and create a copy and call this number two. Drag them to the other side as well. Same thing, align, align to right, and then same for the text. And here we can just add an extra one, a bit more towards the top. I think the text in this case might be a bit too large, so I'm going to select them all and make them one tick smaller. I think that will look better on the, on the slide. Balance them nicely. Shift this one in, there we go. And then we adjust the numbers, so we have one, two, this one becomes three, four, and eventually five. And this leaves some room on the top left, maybe to add a title, you can fill it up however you like. If you don't want any content, you can always position those two in the middle 
and have more of a balanced slide. So this one also looks quite good. Now for the animation part, we have to group them together first. So group the number with the shape. Same thing here. All the steps are exactly the same. And then the final one, there we go. Then for the animation, we duplicate the slide, right click, duplicate, go to the first one, scroll backwards, let's close this, move the text boxes aside, and there we go, and then we repeat for the left side, same thing here, we want to give more space, I'm going to put the text a bit further, since we have quite a few shapes flying in, so the text can come later. And then we select these shapes. I'm going to rotate them again 90 degrees. And then spread them out on the slide. They can come from the different angles, that doesn't really matter. So, as long as they don't interfere with one another, it'll look nice. Select the second one, transition and morph. And look at that. Let's preview that on full screen. And this is how you can create this five part animated infographic in PowerPoint, which isn't that different from the three and four part in the way we make it. Now let's look at the final one, which is the six part infographic. And also for that one, we're just duplicating the page, removing the content and going back to the insert, smart art, relationship and Venn diagram. Here we type in one, two, three, four, five, six, and we can see that seven is the maximum. So if we want to go for seven, eight won't work anymore. So you'll have to use a different style for that. So I'm going to do the sixth one, right click, ungroup, remove the numbers. So hold shift and select them all. Increase the Venn diagram, right click, ungroup, remove the middle part, select them again format shape, merge, and fragment. And here we can remove the middle part, and we start again from the middle, and just select the connecting parts towards the outer ring, union, and in this one you'll see that it goes very smooth, so you can easily just merge them together and we don't have too many of the missing pieces. Every once in a while you'll see one of the missing parts, but you can easily adjust that later, same as the previous ones. So Union, and then oh, once more. And for all the white lines, we just add a small circle. And this gives us a nice six part circle. Repeat the same thing. So select one of the shapes, Ctrl Shift C, and select them all, Ctrl Shift V to repeat that, to copy that formatting. So for this coloring, since we have three parts, I like to do repeat them twice. So we don't have six colors. I'm going to use three colors and I repeat them. So they nicely link to the opposite side as well. So we have the light version. This one, we're going to make it slightly darker. And then we're going to repeat that with a darker version. Light again slightly darker and then with the dark version again you can choose if you prefer to have a different type or a different color that is all perfectly possible for example if you like this better it's a personal style let's go for this combination here now we're going to add the numbers again so select the number and also here i'm going to position them in the middle of their half moon hold control and drag a copy. This becomes three. That'll be four, five, and six. So three, three, four, five, and eventually six. Let's close this. Group them together so we can animate later on. Shape and number each time. Shape and number. And use the shortcut Control G to group them. That's way faster than right clicking each time. I'm going to use this three part numbering, paste it on the right, and then hold control shift to create a copy. We just have to adjust the alignment to the left and also the text alignment 
so that it looks nice. Make sure that everything is nicely balanced and to the side. And let's give this the correct number. So one, two, three. And this becomes four, five, and eventually six. Now we scroll backwards and we want to animate. So we right click and duplicate the page one more time. And on the first part, we drag out the text. Same here. And then for the elements, same thing here. We rotate it, let's say 45 degrees in this case, and then position them outside of the screen. Go to the second slide, transitions, morph, and let's preview that one final time. And this is how you can create this six part animated infographic in PowerPoint in just a few minutes based on the other versions that we have created. Thanks a lot for watching. And if you want to learn more about PowerPoint, make sure to drop a follow and watch the video on the screen right now.